Hello, welcome to the Thursday, April 9th, 2020 edition of the Sands and Storm Sunners Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Brad today looked at another copy of the Sea Loader malware, but it was sort of a little bit interesting here that the actual email that uh, tricked the user into opening the file was written in German and, well, came from an Australian from address. Now, the attachment was a zip file that then unzipped into a VBS file. So very typical pattern here that we have seen many, many times before. And then what's also more and more common that the follow-on traffic where the loader then actually downloads the malware is all HTTPS. Brad is discussing how to deal with that in this particular case. He essentially just set up a man in the middle uh, to retrieve keys to then decrypt the traffic. And as usual, Brad is making a sanitized copy of the PCAP and the decryption keys available. So you can actually go through the procedure to decrypt the traffic. This is very similar to collecting the pre-master secrets from the browser. You may have done that. Uh, that's not that hard, for example, in Chrome. But here, the endpoint, of course, was the proxy. So the pre-master secrets had to be retrieved from the proxy in order to then decrypt the packet capture. It's so a real nice exercise here to sharpen your pack analysis skills to follow Brad's work here. And like I said, all the PCAPs are available, all the key files are available, and he walks you step by step through the process of actually analyzing the traffic. Great refresher, of course, if you ever took the SEC 503 intrusion detection in depth class, where, of course, it's all about this kind of analysis. And talking about things and old mistakes that sort of stick around, uh, Microsoft finally got a hold of corp.com. That domain is in so far important as in early versions of Windows with Active Directory, Windows 2000 Server, first of all, the default Active Directory domain was corp. Now, as things developed, of course, people sort of retained that default name in their networks. And these days, if you just enter corp, there is a chance that your browser, for example, will just add the dot com and you end up at corp.com. This, of course, makes corp.com a great phishing domain. It was not used. It was in private hand. And recently, according to Brian Craig, had been offered for auction at a minimum bid of $1.7 million. I didn't see how much Microsoft paid for this domain. Microsoft, however, did reiterate its guidance to not use any domains internally that you do not own own. Even if you don't need them to resolve on the public internet, it's still good to have a domain that you use internally that you actually own. That way, nobody else can set up any sites using that domain. I already mentioned how some vendors are delaying certain updates and feature releases in order to focus on security issues and also provide more stability while everybody sort of gets used to working from home. Microsoft now announced that they will keep around basic authentication in Exchange Online. That was supposed to be turned off in April, but what they're going to do now is that first of all, any new users will no longer have it available. Also, if you haven't had any recorded usage of that protocol since October, uh, you will also no longer be able to then switch it back on. And of course, uh, you should no longer use it and you may just uh, disable it yourself. Microsoft suggests that you are using OAuth instead of basic authentication. OAuth is widely supported, so it shouldn't really be too difficult to switch over. 
And Bitdefender reports that they found a new IoT botnet that they are calling Dark Nexus. It's sort of something I would say Mirai like. It does use Telnet SH brute forcing to infect systems. And what's a little bit different here is that it has a proxy component. So all of the infected systems will also be an HTTP proxy and has a pretty sort of neat HTTP attack module that can send rather realistic looking HTTP requests. Now, some versions of Mirai had similar capabilities and it's sometimes a little bit hard to tell where one botnet ends and the new one starts based on a lot of code and ideas being borrowed among them. This botnet doesn't appear to be all that big yet, I think I saw a few thousand hosts or so are infected with it, according to Bitdefender, mostly in Asia, where of course we also have a large number of these vulnerable IoT devices. Well, and that's it for today. Thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.